Hello my loyal companions, welcome back to the channel and to another episode of Rogue Revealed, the series where I take you through everything you need to know about Rogue Company. The shooting range has now dropped, which means I've been able to go through and get in-depth statistics to actually answer the question, what is the best assault rifle in the game? I'm going to be giving you tested statistics based on all the work that I've been doing, and I'm going to be doing this for every single class of weapon within the game in future episodes. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that, but for now, let's get into it. There are four different weapons branded as assault rifles within the game. They are the KA-30, shared between Ronan and Dima, the HRM-30KS, which is the weapon of Dallas and of Trench, the MOX Mark IV, which is Saint's scoped assault rifle, and the Nightshade, which is Vise. Because it doesn't really have a place elsewhere, I've added in the MOX Moore, which is Anvil's LMG, for comparison's sake. By doing some meticulous testing, what I've been able to do is find the exact damages, range drop-offs, recoil patterns, and time to kill, which I'm going to be sharing with you in this video now. At the end of the video, I'm going to be giving you a ranking system of the best assault rifle based on the information gathered and shown here. Here are the damage profiles for all the weapons. I'm not going to go through every single number, um, but I will let you know how it's been calculated and generally uh, what some key areas are. So now you can see that we have the weapons down the left hand side here, and next to them we have its base body damage and its base headshot damage. From this alone you can see that the HRM-30KS actually has the best damage profile with 24 body damage and 36 uh, and the two worst ones actually are the Nightshade and the Ebox more. We then have the range drop offs which is the distance at which these weapons start to do less damage and you'll see the body damage and headshot damage displayed next to it as well. What I notice is that these weapons in the game have three different ranges of damage. You have the zero damage mark which is what you see here. Then you have the first range drop off, which is the first distance at which the damage goes down. And then you have the second range drop off, which is the second distance at which the damage goes down. And from there, this damage is consistent no matter what the range. So if that goes all the way up from say 33 meters here to a million meters, it doesn't drop off any further than that. Some interesting things to note here is that the MOX Mark IV actually has the best range, having a drop off at 26 meters then 41 meters. Close in second is then the HRM-30KS uh, with 23 meters and 38 before the drop offs happen. Then um, the range stats for both the KA-30 and the MOX more are actually the same, they both drop off at 18 meters and then drop off at 33 meters. And then finally the worst range um, weapon assault rifle is the Nightshade which cuts off at a very bad 15 meters and then 30 meters um, for the damage drop offs. One thing I did notice as well is that the difference between the range of the first drop off and the second drop off is always 15 meters. As you look through you can see if you just add 15 meters to this you'll get to this drop off as well. Within the game you can upgrade your weapons and what I've done is I've also added the fully upgraded uh, statistics here. So when you get those attachments that increase the range you can see what happens. The damage numbers don't change when the drop off happens but the actual distance at which the drop off occurs is a little bit bigger. Uh, and generally what you'll notice is it's always an extra 4 meters um, that is added until you get down to the Nightshade and MOX more. And I think this is just because of their, their, their low range generally it's actually only 3 meters added. Um, but you can see the statistics there. I then looked at fire rate mainly to help with um, my time to kill that I'll go over in a little bit, but you can see the statistics here of how long it takes uh, for them to get through their entire base round mag. Using the damage profile and the fire rates, I've been able to find out the exact time to kill for each weapon. What time to kill is, is how quickly it takes you to kill an enemy hitting your shots with the gun. You can see here I found the single shot speed, which is how long it takes the bullet to come out of the gun. So to fire one shot for the KA-30 takes 127 milliseconds, which is uh, just over a tenth of a second. Some notable things from here is that the MLX More LMG is actually the fastest fire rate weapon in the uh, assault rifle category, with 92 milliseconds, just shy of a tenth of a second. Uh, and the highest one is the HRM-30KS, which, which makes sense given how hard it hits. This then helps me find out the time to kill. What I've done is I've tested the lowest possible time to kill with this weapon compared to the highest time to kill and this is based off uh, all headshots at the closest range compared to all body shots at the furthest range. So that will give you the uh, exact range at which it takes to kill someone in the game. I then compared this at 100 HP base health and 125 HP if they were to have any armor. Looking at the 100 HP section we can see that the MLX more actually has the lowest time to kill with 458 milliseconds. That then comes close in second to the Nightshade which is 490 milliseconds. Then very close at 491 milliseconds is the HRM-30KS followed by the KA-30 and then the uh, Mark IV. 
You can also see that I've got how many shots it will take you to actually uh, hit that mark with it. Uh, with these high fire rate weapons, you can see it actually takes five bullets to hit this lowest um, time to kill. But if you take some other HRM, it's only three bullets, which is quite interesting. If we then look at those upper ranges, uh, you'll actually see that it remains very, very similar. The MOX more Rin Supreme, then the Nightshade, then the HRM, then the K30, then the MLX Mark IV. When we get into the armor stats, uh, you can see it's very similar with a little bit of a switch up. Um, the MOX more remains supreme, then the Nightshade, and then uh, you actually have the K30 coming in third with then the HRM and then the Mark IV. Um, but these are very, very similar and very, very close stats, uh, so it's basically negligible. It is very important to look at how many shots it actually takes to be realistic about whether you can hit that many based on recoil patterns that I'll go over later. But if you see um, here at the longer ranges with armor, it takes 12 shots to kill someone with a nightshade and the MOX more, where it only takes seven with the HRM. Now they were the extremes of lowest to highest time to kills. What I wanted to do is give you a good overview of actually realistically how long it's gonna take you to kill someone within the game. So what I've done is I've taken just body shots over the different ranges and you can see those statistics here. You can see the time to kills here along with how many bullets it actually takes to the corner in the brackets. But what I've done is I've plotted this on a graph um, so that it's nice and easy to demonstrate. Okay, so here are the different markers for the weapons. You can have the K30 in blue, the HRM in red, and so on. You can see them up there. The lower the line on the graph, the quicker it takes to kill someone with the weapon. And where these start spiking up, that is where the range kicks in and the time to kill drops off slightly. Here you can see that at close range, up until about 18 meters, um, the MOX more actually has the best time to kill, followed by the Nightshade, then the KA-30, then the Mark IV, and then well, quite a big difference is the HRM. Now, the reason this is such a big difference is because it takes five shots to do 100 damage at body shots with the HRM, um, but four shots takes you to 96. So unfortunately, you do need that extra bullet. Um, otherwise, this will be very, very, very comparable with all the others. When we start getting to the first range drop off, you can see that the uh, Mark IV actually starts to have the best time to kill around that 18 to 26 meter mark. And that's because it doesn't have a damage drop off until that 26 meters. So it still has its lowest time to kill in that area, followed again closely by the MOX more. Um, and then the other weapons fall in just quite nicely into place with the KA-30 actually having the worst time to kill um, as we get into this mid-range. It all then becomes very close up here. You can start to see that um, the HRM is coming into play a little bit more around here. The Mark IV just beats it out um, within this sort of 35 to 40 meter range, um, but it is very, very close until it has its uh, damage drop off. And then the MOX more still being very competitive um, with all of these weapons and then the K30 and the Nightshade starting to suffer a range a little bit more. Then when we get into the extremes of the ranges, you can see that the, uh, the more still remains the best, then followed by the Nightshade and the HRM, which are actually on the same line here, then the K30, and then the Mark IV. Obviously within the game, you're not having many fights past this sort of 40 meter mark, um, which means that the Mark IV is actually very, very good um, as we get into the longer ranges of realistic fights. Some key things to pull out from here though is that you can see that the MOX Mort has a very, very good time to kill, very competitive no matter what the range is. The Nightshade starts to suffer in this mid range and then uh, kind of getting towards the end, it's not very consistent, particularly for how many shots it needs to hit. The Mark IV is fairly competitive, it has an okay time to kill uh, sort of in this mid section, suffers a little bit in the early uh, close range fights and a little bit um, at the longer range fights as well. But its actual range means that realistically in the fights you're getting into, you can probably hold your own and get um, good damage and not actually hit that third range fall off. The KA-30 is really good and really competitive up close, but as soon as you hit that mid range, it really starts to suffer. And at long ranges, it's not as competitive as the other weapons. And then the HRM is just very consistent, not very good up in this close range, um, particularly given it's hip fire, you're not really gonna be hit much uh, in this uh, zero to 15 meter range. But as soon as you get to that 15 meter range, it then starts to fall in. You can actually see that its first damage drop off doesn't change its time to kill. The HRM does have a damage drop off at 23 meters, um, but it still takes five shots at 23 meters and still takes five shots at zero meters for um, you to get the things, which is why this line is so flat for so long and then spikes a little bit at that 38 meter mark where it takes just one extra shot. 
So those are all the raw statistics for the different weapons and my explanation of how they all sort of compare with each other in that sense. Before I actually give you my rankings though, I do want to quickly touch on recoil because this is an important part about my decision making as well. If we start with the K30, what you can see is that the first few bullets go straight up and then as you get into the, the sort of midsection of bullets, they start to go side to side and wobble a little bit before then going straight up again. When you add all the attachments onto the gun, you can see that it has very much the similar pattern, but it's all just squished down a bit more. It's all a bit more localized into the same area, but the recoil pattern is very much the same. Up, side to side a bit, then back up. The HRM is interesting. It basically goes directly up, but it goes up quite high, meaning you have to pull down quite a lot when you're using this weapon. When you then add in all the attachments, it does the exact same thing, but again, a little bit more localized, a little bit um, less height on the weapon. The MRX Mark IV is quite interesting, it starts to go up at the start and then does a weird diagonal to the right um, and then bounces back diagonal to the left a little bit. This is a very extreme version of up and to the right um, recoil control but then as we fully upgrade it you can see it does a similar thing but again it's so much more localised, the actual recoil when you add these attachments is phenomenal. The Nightshade has a very bad recoil pattern in my opinion, basically what it does is it goes up then immediately starts to curve to the left then back up to the right before going up and to the right, um, which can be very, very difficult to control. When you add the attachments, there actually is no recoil adjustment attachment, therefore uh, it does the same thing. Then when you get to the MOX more, what you see is the first few bullets go directly up, and then they all start to localize in a fairly like decent spread um, around that midsection, and then after uh, about 20 bullets, it starts to then go up and to the right. When you add all the attachments, it does the same thing, but it's a lot more localized, a lot more squished together. Generally what you'll see with this weapon is that you don't tend to get when you're in a firefight to that up and right part, you just get the immediately up and localized around the, the midsection um, because of how many bullets it actually puts out. Okay then guys, so based off all of the statistics, I'm gonna give you my rankings of what I think the best assault rifle is within the game. As you can tell from the statistics, the MOX Mort is an absolute beast and this is going to take the number one spot. It has the lowest time to kill pretty much every single range with a very, very easy to control uh, recoil pattern and uh, a lot of bullets in the base magazine. The only downside to it really is the how many shots it actually takes for you to get to that time to kill, but given the uh, fire rate, it just absolutely shreds and that's why the time to kill is so low. Coming in second is going to be the MLX Mark IV. The reason for this is because it stays very competitive with the time to kill throughout the different ranges and has the best range within the game, meaning you don't feel those drop-offs as much as you do with other guns. Its recoil pattern really isn't that difficult to get used to and when you get the upgrades it's basically non-existent. Its biggest drawback is the fact that it's a scoped weapon, but for some people this may be actually really useful because you use it at these slightly longer ranges. Coming in third is the HRM 30KS. Now whilst it suffers in time to kill of body shots, if you were to weave a single headshot into that, it would have very, very, very competitive time to kill within the game. But other than that, it just has a very consistent damage profile throughout with the highest damage as long as you hit your shots and you control that recoil, which is actually quite nice, it is just vertically straight up, then uh, it's a very nice gun to use and to hit your bullets with. Next is the KA-30, which has uh, a very good time to kill up close, but then starts to suffer as you get into those other ranges, particularly around the midsection. Uh, the mid ranges of the map is pretty, pretty difficult um, to get the kills. Its recoil pattern is really good. It does bounce up basically to head level and then localize around that area for a bit. So as long as you can hit those shots, uh, you should be getting some good damage on them. It's just not the best assault rifle, it's not very versatile to get sort of those mid to longer range fights. And then finally is going to be the Nightshade, despite its very good time to kill and its fire rate, the amount of bullets you actually have to hit is quite a lot to be able to maximise that time to kill. And also its recoil pattern is garbage, it's really really uh, bouncy, really difficult to control, uh, and if you're trying to have any fight really at longer range you're not going to hit the 12 bullets necessary to get the time to kill that you need. Whilst it has that awesome fire rate and that really good time to kill, it doesn't have the consistency of the damage to actually when you actually hit the bullets. Okay then guys, that takes us to the end of the video and I've been waiting for shooting range for so long so I could get this content out for you and inform you about how the different weapons actually operate within the game. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also come follow me on twitch.tv slash gaming to see live game commentaries and guides. My Discord has just launched as well, the link to that is in the description. Come join the community, come have a chat, uh, and that is if I'm going to play with viewers at any point, where I'll pick them from. Other than that guys, I hope you have a fantastic day, and remember, be loyal, be brave, be relentless, and I'll see you in the next video.